This video will discuss the chemical potential of species in a liquid-liquid solution. So what we're going to discuss here is a system where we have two components, component A and component B. They're both mixed together in a liquid solution. So the state there specified either L or Sol for liquid and solution. And they're going to be, uh, in addition above this, the vapor of each of those uh, two components, so gas particles of A and gas particles of B, indicated by G or vapor for the phases of them, gas and vapor phase. So the total uh, Gibbs energy of the system is going to be the Gibbs energy of the solution plus the Gibbs energy of the vapor. And the change in the Gibbs energy of the system is the change in the Gibbs energy of the solution plus the change in the Gibbs energy of the vapor. Okay, so to start off, we have the number of moles of A is equal to the number of moles of A in the vapor plus number of moles of A in solution. Same thing for B, number of moles of B total equals number of moles of B in vapor plus number of moles of B in solution. So the total change in the number of moles of A, DNA, is equal to DNA vapor plus DNA sol, the change in the vapor plus the change in the solution. Similarly, DNB, change in the number of moles of B, equals DNB vapor plus DNB salt. So we're assuming that the vapor and the solution together form some closed system, so we cannot exchange matter with the outside, so the total number of moles of each substance is going to be constant. So DNA is equal to zero, and DNB also equals zero. And additionally, we're going to assume that the substance B isn't changing how many moles of it are in the vapor and how many are in the solution. We're going to assume that those quantities are static, and we're going to focus on the changes that happen for A. So DNB in vapor equals the change of DNB in sol, or in solution, which is both equal to zero. All right, so DNA equals zero. So this means that the change in the number of moles of A in solution is equal to the negative change in the number of moles of A in the vapor. So our change in <clears throat> our change in our Gibbs energy, if we're going to be at constant temperature and pressure, it's going to be the partial derivative with respect to number of moles of A in solution times the change in the number of moles of A in solution plus partial derivative with respect to number of moles of A in the vapor times the change in the number of moles of A in the vapor, plus same thing for B, but we don't have to worry about those terms because DNB sol and DNB vapor are both going to be set equal to zero. All right, so our change in Gibbs energy then is going to be equal to, notice that this derivative is equal to the chemical potential of A in solution, this derivative is equal to the chemical potential of A in the vapor. So our total uh, change in the Gibbs energy, noting that DNA uh, in solution is equal to negative DNA in vapor. So what we get is our total change in Gibbs energy is the chemical potential of A in solution minus the chemical potential of A in vapor times the change in the number of moles of A in solution. So as we say, at equilibrium for all processes in closed systems, the change in the Gibbs energy is equal to zero at equilibrium. So in order for that to be the case, we need that the chemical potential of A in solution is going to be equal to the chemical potential of A in the vapor. All phases have to be equal in chemical potential to one another, otherwise there is an incentive for uh, moles of A to transport from one phase or another so as to minimize the Gibbs energy. Okay, so what about, um, the, what do we know about the chemical potential of the solution from what we know about the vapor? Okay, well if the vapor is ideal, we know that the chemical potential in, of A in solution in equilibrium has to be equal to the chemical potential of A in the vapor, and that is going to be equal to the chemical potential of A under standard conditions in the gas phase at that given temperature, plus the gas constant times the temperature, 
times the natural log of the partial pressure of vapor A divided by the standard pressure, which is equal to one bar. So this is just from our uh, Gibbs energy expression for from our Gibbs energy expression for a pure substance, which is an ideal gas. Okay, we're also going to define another uh, quantity here, mu a star. So we have a superscript asterisk up in the top right here, and that is equal to the chemical potential of pure liquid A. So if A were a pure liquid by itself, it would have the chemical potential mu a star. Okay, so mu a star of the liquid when it's in equilibrium with its vapor is equal to mu a star of the gas, which is going to be equal to the standard chemical potential at that temperature plus the gas constant times temperature times the natural log of the vapor pressure of pure A divided by the standard pressure. So the standard uh, chemical potential is the chemical potential of that system at one bar of pressure and at that given temperature. So if we want to know the chemical potential of a substance in a solution, we need to know what its vapor pressure is. So adding all these equations together, what we end up getting is that the chemical potential of A in solution is equal to the chemical potential of pure liquid A plus the gas constant times the temperature times the natural log of the vapor pressure of A divided by the vapor pressure of pure liquid A under equivalent conditions. So what this says to us is that the chemical potential of A in solution approaches the chemical potential of pure liquid A as the vapor pressure of A goes to the vapor pressure of pure liquid A. So essentially, we have the vapor of A and B above the solution, and the vapor pressure of each of them tells us what the chemical potential is in the solution. Because if the chemical potential weren't equal in the solution and in the vapor, there would be some incentive for the vapor pressure to either increase or decrease by particles going to or from the solution until the Gibbs energy uh, wouldn't change by changing the number of particles in either the vapor or the solution. So our result here is a nice convenient equation that for ideal gases, all we need to know is the chemical potential of the pure liquid and the vapor pressure of the gas to know what the chemical potential of a component is in any kind of solution.